Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Chris here, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the new Universal Audio Electra 88 Vintage Keys. Let's go. Alright, so recently Universal Audio have released this plugin, which is kind of an emulation of the Rhodes keyboard. Sounds like this. Sweet. So you might have heard that sound before. There are obviously a couple of manufacturers that already make this type of plugin. So I'm really curious to see what Universal Audio have brought. Normally they're very good at bringing a, a really quality product to the table. So I'm very excited to see what they've got in stock. So this is kind of what the homepage, I guess, of the plugin looks like. It's very classic Universal Audio Silic GUI as always. I wonder. Yeah, the keys on the <laughs> on the keyboard animate when you play them which is a nice little detail, but there's that. So I think I'm just going to quickly run through just kind of all the pages, all the things you see on screen, and let's just kind of talk about what's going on. So this is obviously the main keyboard section. There's a pedal section, an amplifier, and the studio. Oh, nice, with some studio effects. And then a settings with, okay, just some velocity performance stuff, nothing too crazy. So looking at the keyboard section, I can see we've got a couple of controls at the bottom. Wah, phaser, compressor volume, treble, bass, and some vibrato, as well as some mod, delay, and reverb. So let's quickly just flick through this bottom section and see what it sounds like. But first of all, let's just listen to the dry sound one more time. That's your dry sound, let's crack on with it. So we've got the wall control first, I'll turn that on. Okay, and I'm <laughs> instantly noticing we're spiking logic, so I might just pull the volume back on that. I'll probably just crank it up for the video's sake so you can hear it. Nice, nice, and I guess we have different kind of... Oh, the sensitivity. I guess how much the filter is opening. Sweet, so there's that. We got some phaser next. Probably crank it back up because I've that wall was giving us loads of spikes. So there's a phaser, very nice. Next is the compressor. Basically, just going to help with my dynamics. So I don't need to play as loud or as soft, it's gonna push me somewhere in the middle of those two. So if I play hard, and if I play soft. So kind of landing about the same place volume-wise, as opposed if I had this off, loud and then. You can clearly hear there's one's loud and one's soft, whereas with the compressors on, it kind of lets that fall somewhere in the middle. Still clipping a bit on Logic, but nothing too crazy. I can just turn that down. But I do really like this because, you you know, it helps with those softer dynamics. I do really like playing soft and it just kind of brings it to life. Sweet, so that's the compressor. Let's quickly go through this. I mean, volume. You know what that does? Got this kind of EQ. So this is nice. It's 
either flat, boosted or cut. The inside one is the treble and the outside is the bass. That makes sense. Okay, sweet, so there's that, and then I'll just put these back to flat. And then we got a little bit of a vibrato. Sweet, so we've got that little bit of vibrato, and next we've got mod, I guess like a chorus. There's your mod kind of pick the intensity of that full fat mod sweet and then with a little mod Some delay. Let's crank that up. What is this? The amount? So, I guess just the level of the delay. Sick. So that's your delay. And lastly, we've got reverb. Oh, it's a short reverb. Good, it's a nice little short reverb. I like that. There you go. So that's kind of the front page at least. So I'd say we move on to the pedals and see what this has to offer us. So we've got three pedals here, warp, phaser and compressor. And I assume they are kind of linked with, yep, they're linked with these bad boys. So does that mean we can change them? What? Eee, filter on. Okay. So a kind of different type of envelope filter. Or I can leave it on none. Next we have the phaser, which can be swapped out for chorus. Nice, and it's the brigade chorus, which they've got as their plugin. Sweet. Do we have anything else? Flanger. Ooh. Sweet, so we've got the flanger, spring verb. Nice. Okay, we've got that, and then tape echo. Ooh. That's nice. cranked (laughs) 
This is sick. Lovely. And then are these the same? Yeah, these are the same. Chorus compressor, that's all the same. So that's our pedal section. Next, we move on to the amplifier. Let me just turn off these effects for now. We don't need that. Great. So onto the amplifier. So right now, we're using this center section, which is kind of the main ramp, I guess you could say. And then we have a couple of controls over the room level. Oh, that's lovely. So got a little bit of that room in there without it. So a little bit of that DI sound going on. But I do really like that room. Wow. Sick. And then we can pick one mic or two. I guess mono or stereo. Well, let me take that room down. Yeah, so judging by the signal on logic, it's mono. Add that room for a little bit more air and stereo goodness. Sweet, so there's that. And then obviously on axis, off axis. Sick, and then a filter. Not doing much, but that's there. And then we can pick our mic. Some SM57. What else we got? 421s. And then lastly, the ribbons, uh, Royal 121s. Sweet. So that is kind of all of the section on the first amp. Then we have this tiny Fender style amp. A little bit more gain going on there. Let me turn these back down. That is set to default. Okay. Oh, we can change the speaker. That's nice. Okay, let's get that drive down. Definitely more crunchy than the, the middle amp. Again, we can pick the mics. This Royer sounds great, honestly. Just has a real lot of good low mids going on. Now, whether that's good in the mix or not is another question, but uh, I'll leave that up to you. So next we can change the speaker. We've got the stock or this JBF120. So stock. And then the JBF. Oh, cleaner. I mean, I say cleaner. It's still crunchy. I do prefer that to the stock one. It's definitely warmer. The stock one, the JBF is a bit more. Got a bit more clarity in there, not too sure what's going on. And then obviously we have the room, so we can slap a bit of that in. That's about it. Obviously we have some different controls at the bottom. The EQ is kind of split over a treble middle bass. some reverb oh yeah and this is that that springy goodness
Lovely. Got that, and then a little bit of vibrato. Or I guess this would be tremolo. Okay, so we've got that. That's basically all of our options on this. Oh, and we have a little bright mode, actually. It makes it a little bit darker without it. Sweet. And last but not least, we have this Leslie. Now, if I remember correctly, this Leslie speaker is based on their Waterfall Rotary plugin. Judging by kind of what they've got going on here, it seems to be about the same layout. And I wonder, actually, if the mod wheel... Oh, nice. You can change the speed of the Leslie. So you got that, and you obviously have your drive and your volume, similar to the, the plugin. Got those Leslie options. You can obviously change the position of the mics. Pull that drive down a bit. Sweet. So those are the amplifier sections. Last on the list is the studio. This is where we've got our effect. To dive into this, I'm just going to put it back on the original amp. Sick. And now let's check out these studio effects. So we have an EQ, which is doing a bit of a cut in the mids, kind of like a smiley face thing. We have two filters here that are fully open. And that's about it. Oh, and you can swap the EQ and the compressor. Okay, that's quite nice. I mean, I guess, okay, no, so you can't move around any of the effects, but I guess, you know, pre-EQ comp thing, that's a, that's a question for another day, but if they're willing to include it, that's quite nice. So, this EQ, I mean, you know what it does. It's an EQ. If I wanted to sculpt my sound a bit more, I could go in there and do that. The compressor, now, this is going to be a bit interesting because... It doesn't have any controls per se beside compress, mix, and then these presets for, I guess, what would be different attack and release times and ratios. So let's maybe have a quick flick through those and see what it's given us. Starting with smooth. Let's crank that compression. Clearly slapping that compressor. Let's try punchy. Definitely a bit more attack. Fast. Aggro, which is full fat compression. Oh, you even get... Tiny bit of saturation. Let's put the mix on full and just see what we can get. Whoa. That's mad. Woo. Okay, put it on to fast. Punch. 
flawlessly smooth. Definitely providing different sounds overall, which is quite nice. You might have to play with it to find your favorites. It's nice that you can use this compressor to even add a bit of that saturation. Next we have our modulation. This is a combination of all of the modulation. So we've got chorus, flanger, phaser, wow and flutter. And then the intensity, mono, stereo, power and rate. So let's get it going. So this is the chorus, flanger. Phaser, and then wow and flutter. Sick, and then we have a little mix control, which doesn't work when you're on wow and flutter. <laughs> But either way, I'm full wet. Okay, and then the intensity is kind of our amount. <laughs> Pretty intense. Clip and major. That's the kind of one thing I noticed is that the gain is quite all over the place. Once you start getting effects involved, it's like you just have to be a bit wary of the master output because once you start clipping the plug and you can hear that kind of crispiness you can hear it there <laughs> on the right side but you know you just pull down the volume a bit until it's no longer clipping in your DAW nice and then you should have clean sound very similar to kind of how the pedals are working but obviously it's in a kind of different section and you can utilize it differently I guess or maybe kind of have different pedals on one and you can utilize the studio effects differently so you got some options for that but it's very nice we've got the delay so let's crank that soldier boy okay so this is just kind of copying the amount here so turn up the feedback and it properly feeds back start to get that feedback loop going on can change the type to a wide Ooh. still feeding back let's get ping pong got a little bit of EQ for the delay which is nice and I like this it's got a little to reverb knob. So if I get that reverb going. Which is lush because if it was without it and we had the reverb, it's funny because you can hear the initial sound with reverb but then the delays are dry, so it's really nice that you can kind of feed that into the reverb. Makes it kind of live in the same world a bit. And then lastly, this reverb, not too much going on. Obviously in the delay we just have this old, new and digital, which is... slightly different variations and then lastly in this reverb we've got a plate hall cathedral and ambience so a nice couple variation on the reverb Ooh, let me turn off the delay for now a hall is quite nice cathedral dark and long and then ambience Mm. 
was expecting it to sound something like this. <laughs> and is that on all of them, if you change the decay? Hmm. So not quite, they all have different lengths of reverb. What's the longest? All right, so you got that nice little couple. Oh, in the chamber, lest we forget. Sweet, and I think that covers the majority of the plugin. Otherwise, it seems pretty intuitive, you know, not too much going on. Sound quality wise, I'm quite a fan. I say we kind of finish off this video by playing through a couple of presets, because that's always a nice place to kind of see how versatile these things are. And I'll probably leave you on that. But if you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and a comment. I'd love to know what you thought about it. And subscribe, because that really helps support the channel. Once again, I've been Chris Vella, and I will see you on the next one. Ladies and gents, this has been the UADX Electra 88. Let's go. Thank you.